Um, good afternoon. My name is Shadia Yassin, and uh, I'm honored to be in this space. Um, I don't know where to start. Since Maya asked me, was it four weeks or five weeks ago, I've actually been having nightmares. <laughs> I'm like, um, how am I going to be coming into a room of experts and come and share a story or a little bit of what it is that I do um, in my experience? And so I didn't know what was my entrance point, where do I start, because there's so much uh, that I want to share, but at the same time, there's so much that I also want to hear and learn from you. So I kind of like, it wasn't until actually this morning that I was like, you know what, I'll figure out a way where I could combine multiple stories and I'm hoping that you'll be able to sort of like follow with me and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lose anyone um, to share the story that I, that I wanted to share. Um, I had, even last evening I had a conversation with Maya and I'm just like, I still don't know what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so, Two things, I mean, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, those stories, I, I, could, I could relate to those stories so much. I came here uh, at a high school age. And one thing is I wanna point out is, I didn't, um, how do you say it? I didn't own my voice and be this vocal until when I got that citizenship. You know that citizenship card? When you get, you get called for that PR card first, and then the citizenship comes right after, then I was like, all right, I have the ammunition. <laughs> Um, I have scars of all sort of like the different experiences that I've had in high school. I know other peers and young people who've had it even worse, um, but it's learning through, through each other and learning from each other. And I made, it, uh, I made sure that, you know what, I'm not gonna keep quiet. Whatever it is that I could do, I wanna share the stories and I wanna make sure that no one feels that way and no one is able to sort of like experience what other people have experienced and finding tools. So I'm always looking at different tools, how to connect with people, and at the same time, how do I move from one step to the next step of whatever it is, whatever my vision and goal was. Um, at high school, uh, being a, a young woman of African descent and, uh, and, uh, and actually for finally passing math and science, I was, I, was, I was interested in getting into engineering, and that was my passion. And the, the, the idea of that was to get into engineering so that I could make the money and do community development work, specifically international development work, going back home. Um, and the reality was, one, um, the racism that existed in our school system. Um, the guidance counselors didn't think that I was actually smart enough to, to get into advanced classes. Back then we had advanced and OAC and all that stuff and, uh, and, uh, and right now we have academic and applied, same thing. So I was put in uh, advanced class, uh, I mean um, general classes, that's what they were, uh, they were called. Um, from general classes, it wasn't until a teacher who pulled me out and said, what are you doing in my class? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm here in school, I'm excited, what are you talking about your class? She's like, this is a general class there's actually an academic class, and I think you're supposed to be in an academic class. When I went to the guidance counselor, the guidance counselor said, no, no, you cannot get into that class. So I spent the entire year of high school dealing with general classes um, to finish all those general classes, ESL classes, in order for me to go back again to grade 10 academic classes. So I lost a year. Uh, and, and this is not something that only newcomers uh, experience. A lot of first, second, third generation uh, young people, especially of African descent, Latino, uh, um, you name it, any person of color, um, goes through this and, until today, 2015. And this is something that I, I wanna share this story because it's really important because it, it really impacts our young children. Um, being an educator, I see it in our elementary schools. Our young people start getting sort of like labeled and targeted and the transition to the so-called uh, um, applied sort of like stream starts when they're in grade six, grade seven, grade eight. So as parents, especially being newcomer parents, you need to be aware of these things for your children. Uh, a lot of parents are not aware of this and this is one, one sort of like story that I wanted to just sort of like share quickly. One quick thing, what could you do when you go home be, 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 pay to so much attention on your child's education because that is where we start losing our young people. I work with young people in the Western Mount Dennis area but also I've worked previously since when I was high school volunteering and all that sort of like stuff for years um, in the West End, downtown and so forth. And so 
a number of things that I picked up through the way. I was able to get to meet some amazing uh, women who I used as mentors. Uh, I used as people that I could bounce off ideas, listen, learn. But one thing that uh, I remember was the issue of invisibility of racism in our society, in this country. And it wasn't until when I took this class, um, it was called intercultural and anti-racist training, um, that I actually got the language of how to deal with racism in this country. I was able to, to articulate what I was feeling because there was a point in my life that I thought I was actually going crazy. You know, when you're just like angry and you don't know why you're angry. Um, so so, so that, that was really key and I, I tell everybody, um, please, I know the class is not sort of like available everywhere, but pick up, uh, pick up those tools are really important because it's about defending yourself. Um, and, and, and I know I'm going to talk, I know there's so much sort of like limited time. So I wanted to touch base on a couple of things in terms of community organizing, because that's one thing that I do, um, and I love it, and I'm learning, I'm not an expert. Um, it's something that I believe it's innately in us. Uh, one thing is we have a lot of things in common, yet we forget what our commonalities are and we get caught up with the differentiation. Um, especially when you're dealing with this society where it's so easy to be divided through ethnically, um, through classism, and all this sort of like thing. So, for example, the African diasporic people, or as black people, we always, you know, oh, that's a black people's issue. Really, the black people's issue is your issue if you're not black. And I think this is, where, this is where we need to talk about it, especially being people of color, people coming from different parts around the world, but also dealing with our own First Nations people here. Because um, oppression comes in many forms. However, at the same time, it affects us all. So one of the things that, uh, that we do is, um, and uh, Maya asked me to speak about, is the project that, uh, it's not a project, it's actually the reality, it's lived experiences, um, that we're dealing with carding. How many people are familiar about carding? Or, you know, st the police stopping uh, 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 young people of color in, in the city. Uh, this is something that um, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't supposed to be actually being the lead in it in a sense to say, you know, start doing stuff about it because it was affecting a lot of us. But the Toronto Star Known to Police um, article opened that door for us. Um, having that article being published and then we started, you know, myself and my colleagues, we sat down and we were working with young people and we're sitting down looking at each other and we're like, wow. This is power right here. The media now is telling our story, our lived experiences, what our young people are going through, and what are we, the community, going to do about it? What is our response? And it was quiet for a good week and a half. So we decided, and this is after our young person came in, he was doing his, he was doing his placement with us, and he was sharing a story that he got stopped almost eight times from the bus stop to where his house was, being questioned, taunted, and you name it. So we looked at each other and said, you know what, let's have a community meeting. Community meeting meaning locally, but also leave it open to the citywide. We had that community meeting in May 16th, and I remember it, and it was fascinating to see the amount of people who came out. All of a sudden now, we saw the activists of this city. We saw lawyers of this city. We saw community people who actually were so impacted with this issue, but didn't have a forum to have this kind of like discussion. After that meeting, we convened another meeting and said, you know what, there's an appetite. This is the, this is the right time. Um, and so we convened, we convened a meeting of who's doing what. And so if you're interested in organizing on a big issue, uh, a systemic issue, and I, I have tons of those, you know, especially issues with like, you know, newcomers coming here with expertise. I, I, I think I, 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 could, I could go on for, for forever. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit sort of like tidbits of some of the things that we did, and uh, it has proven to be successful until this day. Um, and, and we're still continuing on with this fight. The fight hasn't ended. Um, it's still something that we're working on. And so what we did was after that meeting is we convened who's doing what. And we called out um, everybody who came to that meeting, we invited. All of a sudden now we were able to connect with the lawyers. So uh, the lawyers, the activists, uh, different sort of like community leaders uh, in the city to come in a round table and speak about the issues. What is it that they're doing? So now we from the community side 
who thought that nobody cares, nobody's doing anything, all of a sudden were being educated and we learned so much through that. Having that open door is very important because that is how you start building uh, partnership but also engaging different voices and different powers that be in terms of uh, people of, you know, uh, as, as the language called, the adequate champions. So after those meetings, there was tons of meetings, meetings after meetings after meetings, you get tired of these meetings. However, they were really important because we were building a new sort of like coalition and that was the Stop Police Carding Campaign. Um, we've been doing this for almost four to five years right now um, and we've gotten to a point where right now the, the, the policies have changed even though they're not to, 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 to our benefit still, the battle is on, but the ministry now has actually intervened. And so we're still pushing forward and we're looking into how do we move beyond police carding because the biggest issue is how commu uh, po police, uh, police our communities. So in terms of what, how could we look at community policing in a different lens and really push back to the police services and say, you cannot treat our communities this way because they're not treating Rosedale and Forest Hill the same way they're treating our neighborhoods and our young people. So what, 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 what some, of the, some of the key things that we ended up doing is get an adequate champion. An adequate champion was having key partners, for example, the Ontario Law Union people. Uh, we don't know, we, we weren't too familiar with the law, but having people who were who, who are sort of like strong on the law co uh, component of things, they were able to inform us, and when we needed something, they were able to sort of like reach out to certain people that we didn't have access to, to bring them in the conversation. The second was adequate resources. Um, we're very resourceful people. I think um, when, when people are talking about innovation and social innovation, we are the innovators. And I think we're always left behind um, when it comes to the conversations about social innovation and innovating and new ideas and solving our own issues. We can solve our issues. The question is, are those, pe are those who are in power ready to hear our solutions? Are they ready to actually move forward what it is that we're proposing? So these are some of the things. So we have the resources and it was tapping into the resources by our communities, by our community leaders, but also in terms of using the media um, on our side. Second was the urgency, the urgency of change. Um, the urgency of change was the media. The media made it like a very public thing. It became a political thing. All of a sudden, Mayor Tory came out, came out and started commenting on it. Um, so now, and I believe the article by Desmond Cole is what actually opened the eyes of the affluent of our city into this issue. Because our community members have always been screaming, yelling, and talking about this. But because of the color of the skin, where we come from, the accents that we have, it really fell on deaf ears. However, Desmond Cole was, uh, article was really poignant when, when it came to telling the story that, that was, how do you say it? That was, that was Canadian. That was really Canadian because we really have, we don't represent Cana uh, Canada in a sense. And it was really interesting in, 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 comes, uh, in terms of how the social dynamics of our city work. Um, and, and, and you know what? Thanks to him, because that issue all of a sudden brought, you know, the affluent Torontonians who came and spoke in such like flamboyant uh, 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 words about how we need to stop this injustice. However, the injustice still hasn't stopped. And so we need those, those same voices, we need them as allies to move things forward, right? And so that was really key in terms of looking at how our society works and really understanding the race dynamics about our city. Um, so that and commitment. I think commitment and willingness from community is very, very important. We had nothing. Uh, we, we, slept, uh, we spent so many sleepless nights. I think everybody who's in the community, like, you know, uh, has been dealing with this. But sometimes you need that extra push. And there's certain times that we fail. And it's okay to fail. And, being, and, and acknowledge that failure because it's le the learnings from those failures that actually give us the tools to move forward and actually win much more larger battles uh, that, that are coming ahead of us. So who's doing what? Who, knew, who needs to be in the room? These are the questions. How do, we get, uh, how do we get the rest of our communities informed and engaged? And how do we get it into action? 
I hate doing things and just talking, talking without action. For those who, who work with me, they know that, you know, it's like one meeting, two meeting, let's go, we need to get this out in the streets and make it happen. Um, and so a lot of people get lost in the meetings and the, and the processes, as, as, as people call it, and the theories. And I would like us to challenge each other that we don't stay in that area. We stay in action, because in action is where we learn from our mistakes and our successes. Um, so I think I'm going to end there. Uh, I believe there's going to be questions and answers. I could talk forever. But uh, uh, to me, one thing also is looking at it's not about me moving forward. It's about how am I moving forward with the rest of my peers, with the rest of the young people that we have, and us marching together on whatever the next level is. So whatever knowledge that I have, whatever resources that I have, I'm always interested in and in, in, uh, on sharing them as, as, as widely as I can, because it's not about me being successful. It's about we being successful together. Thank you. Thank you.